In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is Amen. risen indeed. Amen. Alleluia, you know it. Just as the sun had risen, the ladies arrived at the tomb. It's hard for us to imagine. We already have the lights on. They've been on for close to 2,000 years now. The candles we carried tonight and read the lessons by and sang the hymns by, they're blown out. The lights are on. We have said, alleluia, resurrection is on our minds. When the ladies went to the tomb, death was on their minds. The plan was to anoint his body. They were thinking practical and rational thoughts. Wasn't the crucifixion awful? Can you believe what they did to him? What will it be like to see his body again? Who will roll away the stone when we get to the tomb? That one was probably a 15-minute conversation. Let's talk about the stone. It's much easier. It's morning. There's a chill in the air. And you know they're walking with their heads down. And as they arrive, they look up and see that the stone had already been rolled back. Bless their hearts, they went into the tomb. One at a time, they bent down and almost crawled into the tomb. And once in the tomb, each looked up and they saw a young man in a white robe. We know that it was an angel because he said the angel words, don't be afraid, don't be alarmed, don't worry. We will find out that they didn't take that recommendation to heart. Don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. See for yourselves. And now he gives them instructions. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he has gone on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he promised. Jesus has gone home to Galilee. He has left the awful atmosphere of Jerusalem and gone back to peaceful Galilee. Meet him there. Well, The ladies were afraid. I imagine that they bumped their heads on the opening of the tomb as they exited. They were amazed and terrified, we read. What do you think they were afraid of? What amazed them? Were they afraid that his body had been stolen? Were they amazed because they thought that something else might be possible? I think the most amazing aspect of this resurrection story is that the gospel ends with the ladies fleeing the tomb and saying nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The gospel of Mark ends right there. If I knew Greek better, I could show you how it ends with the word for, but I don't. The story doesn't get resolved like we would like it to. We don't get to hear from Mark about how the resurrected Jesus meets with his friends. Nothing. The ending isn't complete. (coughs) Fortunately, we have the other Gospels to tell us more of what happens after the resurrection. Fills in the blanks. (coughs) We even have Paul's descriptions of what everyone knew and remembered about what happened. But in Mark... The ladies flee and are silent. There is no ending for Mark. We don't get to know the rest of the story. Not exactly. For we are the rest of the story. If the ladies had remained silent, We wouldn't be here. 
Their silence could have only lasted for a while. If the woman hadn't told what they saw and experienced, then no one would have known about the resurrection and there wouldn't have been the explosion that became the Christian church. They didn't report right away. For a while, they said nothing. How long do you think they kept quiet? Go and tell his disciples and Peter, the angel had said. Go and tell the disciples and Peter. Peter was a disciple. Why is he singled out? Well, we know. They all betrayed him, but Peter was the first among equals. Go and tell them he is risen. Go and tell them to ponder the possibility that their betrayal was not the final reality. Not their final reality. Go and tell them the possibility that their failure will not define them. Go and tell them about the possibility that everything has changed. Go and tell them that there is something new under the sun. And let Peter know it's okay. He can start again. This situation was difficult for the ladies too. They didn't betray Jesus like the menfolk did, but they had their own difficulties to overcome. Resurrection wasn't a straight line for them. They too believed that there was nothing new under the sun. They knew how life crushes us. They knew about a world that did not value them. They knew what it was like to be treated second class. But they also knew what it was like to be loved and valued by Jesus. They had tasted hope. And they came to the tomb knowing the story of Jesus was over. They had lost their hope when he died. Could they ever risk hoping again? Would he really meet them in Galilee? Can life really be different than I believed it is destined to be? Can hope really overcome despair? Can death be overcome by life? We are proof that they overcame their fear and met with their risen Lord. So tonight we have two baptisms. One, two. Lorraine and Martine will be baptized. And they're going to go under the water, so to speak. It symbolizes their death and their resurrection to new life. And it is more than a symbol, it's a sacrament. God will do something to them. Baptism will change everything. They will be raised with Jesus and marked as Christ's own forever. So tonight, we are the ladies at the tomb. It's okay, gentlemen. We are a part now of how the gospel of Mark continues, how the gospel of Jesus Christ continues. We carry the message of our risen Lord. We will be part of the story of Lorraine and part of the story of Martine. We will remind them that Jesus is alive and that he will meet them at home and at school and be with them even to the end of the ages. We will also make it clear that we will be with them. When they and others are tempted to despair, we will be reminders that Christ has defeated death and that resurrection is our final reality, that death has been swallowed up in life. And so as we exit the tomb, some of us bumping our heads and get past our fear. We will share the message that Jesus is alive, that darkness has lost its power, that hope has overcome despair. And we share the refrain, Alleluia.
Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah.